G'day, it's Rusty from Rusty's Metal Cut Signs and Designs. And first of all, welcome to the channel. And I'd just like to introduce this video as being a series of um, how we're gonna build a CNC plasma cutting table. Now, I just wanna start off at the basics. And Now to start with, let's talk about what a plasma cutter is, and then we'll talk about what a CNC plasma cutter is and how we're gonna build this, this table. So um, here's what I prepared earlier. All right, this is my Unimig Razor Cut 45 uh, plasma cutter. And think of it as an electric oxyacetylene set. Uh, you use oxyacetylene to, to cut metal. This is the same sort of thing, except it uses an electric arc principle, uses high pressure air, um, and it converts the molten stream into plasma and what it has is basically an electric current. You have an earth clamp just like a welder has. You clip that to the, to the metal. Uh, you have a torch and you have a main supply obviously to your uh, to plasma cutter and you have an air supply in the back. And this hand piece torch directs the electric current to the job and the high pressure air is also used in order to for, for the cutting process. Now, this will work on any metals, so stainless, um, aluminium, mild steel, copper, brass. You can cut that from, you know, 14, 16 gauge sheet right the way up to this. This will cut half inch. I probably won't be cutting that thick, but this will go up to that with a 45 amp capacity. Now, these plasma cutters come in a range of sizes and outputs. As I mentioned, this one's um, maximum of 45 amps, goes from 20 to 45. You can get 65, 80, 500 amp uh, units, and it depends on how thick a material you want to cut. Um, now, the quality of the cut that you get from a plasma cutter depends on the gap between the nozzle and the actual surface of the metal that you're cutting, uh, the speed that you, 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 you drag the torch across the job, and the current that you have set. So those factors play a part in the quality of the cut that you're doing. Now when you use a cutter freehand or up against a uh, some sort of guide, you're limited to the shape you can cut. So if you wanted to cut um, an ornate shape or a sign or, or a, um, a wall, some wall art, you need to be able to follow some sort of tool path as they call it. So in order to get the torch to actually follow around a preset cut with, with some sort of precision, what we need to do is we need to introduce the CNC part. Now CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control and that's the principle of what a CNC table is going to be. Now you can apply CNC to a milling machine, a lathe. In this particular case we're going to build a plasma cutter with CNC capability because the nature of the business we're running is that we're going to be making signs and, and, and wall art. So let's now talk about the components that make up the CNC part of it. Now as I said CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control. So what we need is we need some software and we're going to run that on the laptop. We need an interface unit that between the software on the laptop and the actual driving mechanism. So what we're going to use here is this is a motion controller from a company called Proma Electronica and it's their MyPlasm CNC motion controller. This is a USB uh, connected device that goes between here and my laptop and also with this so, so what this does this accepts what we call a toolpath now the toolpath is just the shape just just think of the toolpath as being the shape around the object you want to cut so we can build that in a, in a third party piece of software or we can also build it within their what we call CAD program which is a computer aided design. So you draw what you want, then you import that into the software. The software then tells the CNC table where to move the torch. Now the way we move the torch is by having three axes. Now the three axes of a 
of three axes of movement is your x axis goes across, the y axis goes up and down this way, or back and forth I should say, and the z axis goes up and down. So you've got left and right, back and forth, up and down. So what we need to do with that is this controller card has connections for X, Y, and Z, which is your X backwards and forth, your Y, and your, your Z axis up and down. It also has the power supply input, and it also has some inputs for limit switches and things. So this will connect to what we call a stepper motor driver unit. Now this stepper motor driver unit is designed to accept a signal from the motion controller. You configure that you configure the settings based on the current that the motor draws and the motor that connects to this is a thing called a stepper motor. Now a stepper motor has four wires typically, some have more. Um, this has two coils in it so you actually pulse a current into the motor and make it turn. Now these by default have what they call 200 pulses per revolution. So in order to make that shaft go around one turn, this thing needs 200 pulses from the stepper module, which comes from the control module. And without getting too technical, you can actually introduce micro-stepping, which means that your movement is much smaller, gives you greater accuracy. Okay, so what we need to have is we need to have a stepper motor driver and a stepper motor for each axis. So in order to make the, the torch, let's, let's think of it as the torch, in order to make the torch move left to right in its holder, we need to drive it left or right. The other thing we need to do is be able to move the whole carriage up and down, which is where the torch is on, and that's for our Y axis. Now my design is going to have, because this machine is basically going to be 1800 by 1800 as a footprint and the idea I went for that size is because I can get a half a sheet of, of steel, standard sheet of steel is um, or metal is 2400 by 1200 so if I cut that sheet in half I've got a 1200 by 1200 piece of metal this will fit nicely on my table the final size may be slightly smaller than 1800 by 1800, but the, the principle I'm using at the moment is that's the size I'm going to use. And as we build it, we'll work out whether we can trim it down a bit, and I suspect we probably will. Okay, now I can drive the X axis, now I've got to drive the Y axis. Now to keep it square, you don't want this thing crabbing at all, I'm actually going to run two stepper motors, one on each side of the Y drive to drive it up and down. So of course I need two motors, I need two stepper driver units. And that covers that side of the Y axis. Now to get the torch to go up and down, I need some mechanism. And what I'm going to use is, I still need a stepper motor driver unit. What I'm actually going to use is, is a pre-built Z axis and what this does is the motor will drive this block up and down and attached to this block will be the torch. So that's how I'm going to get my drive and each of these stepper motors require a 48 volt DC supply so the kit came with two power supplies because I'm running four motors I'll run two motors off each of these 48 volt power supplies and the control module itself requires its own 24 volt DC supply. So hence we have a, a 24 volt power supply as well. And so all this will fit inside a cabinet and the cabinet will be mounted on the side of the, the, the table. And all you'll have is a connection, this USB cable from the, the box to the laptop, which will be slightly remote from, from this. Now, one other thing, I want to include in this is part of the motion controller unit also came with what they call a torch height controller and this unit is an, a plasma interface unit which has torch height control and it also has an ohmic sensor. Now let's do, deal with the torch height control first. In order to set, let me get the torch. 
Let's just look at the torch for a minute. Now, as I said before, the quality of the cut depends on the gap between the tip of the nozzle and the tip of the workpiece that, that you're cutting. So, if you introduce torch height control, now here, here's an example, this, this is what will happen. This is your, this is your Z-axis driver. There'll be a plate on this and this, that plate goes up and down 110 mil of total travel. So this will be here somewhere. And the idea is I'll be able to drive this up and down with this unit. And in order to maintain the clearance between the tip and the actual metal, not only can I drop the, will the software let me drive this unit up and down, once it starts to cut, if the sheet of metal being thin starts to warp, um, the gap between the tip here and the workpiece can change. And if that changes, your cut quality can change. So the, the idea of this torch height controller unit is actually going to monitor the gap by measuring the voltage between the earth clamp on the metal and the, the voltage at the tip. So all it's going to do is it's going to change the height of this block, raise it up and down to maintain the required gap, which equals the required voltage. And that's some tests we need to do to work out what that voltage will be for various metals, for various amperages that you set. Now there's two other functions that this plasma interface unit can do. One of them is it can actually turn the plasma cutter on and off. And what we're doing with that option is we're replacing the trigger switch on the handpiece and we're telling this unit to turn the, the plasma cutter on and off. And the third function of this interface unit is it has what we call ohmic sensing. Now ohmic sensing just means if you measure a circuit you get ohms if you get a short circuit, you get no ohm, zero ohms. If it's an open circuit, you get millions of ohms. So what we need to do is we need to be able to connect onto the outside edge of this uh, torch piece. So when we drive the torch down into the, into the workpiece, we don't want the torch to keep pushing down onto the metal. You can do it manually. You can wind it down, align the tip with the workpiece, set that as the zero height and then tell the, the software how far off the job to, to, to set your torch height. What this ohmic sensing does is as, as, the, as it drives the torch down onto the metal, there's a connection between a little finger or a probe on the outside here and the metal where the workpiece is clamped on. So when it sees a circuit, this then tells the software, stop, I've reached the workpiece and then it will back off to set the initial torch height. And that's, that's a pretty cool feature of this, um, this interface unit. So this is the basics and I bought all this gear online. Uh, the motors and the stepper driver kit came in one unit. I bought the um, motion controller with its torch height controller unit um, online as well. and. I'd already, I'd already purchased the, the, the plasma cutter, but as the videos progress and we start to build this, this unit, I'll put a list of all the components that I'm using in the description so you'll get an idea of what I'm using and where I got the parts from. And there are other types of equipment around, there's other brands that do similar things. I just chose this particular system because I liked the simplicity of it. and. So there are other systems on the market as well, and I guess it's up to you to, to decide which system you want to go with. Okay, so that's the basics of what we're doing, and what I want to do from here is, I don't want to make this a, a big long video. In, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're actually going to wire this whole electrical system up and plug it into the laptop, and you'll actually, I'll show you how the tool path will drive these motors to drive the gantry. I haven't built the gantry yet, but we can show you that the movement of the motors as they spin, which relates to the movement of moving the torch around. So that'll be in the next video. So if you like the video, thumbs up would be appreciated. As I said before, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, please do so. The subscribe button's down here. And this is a first of a series of, of videos on how we're going to build uh, this CNC plasma cutting table 
and we hope you stick around for the entire series and we look forward to seeing you in the next one.